Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Pacific Northwest. It's about 26 degrees today and winter is definitely on its way. Um, typically by now we would have a foot of snow, but it's been a late start which is great, giving me more time to get some things done, but um, we're expected to have a storm this uh, next couple of days. It's supposed to dump about 12 inches, so we'll see what happens, you know how weather forecasting is. But uh, I thought today I'd go over the uh, different um, settings and different modes for operating the, the power lift and how I plan to, to use it in my operation. So um, I'm just going to turn the unit on here. And it goes through its little startup routine. And then, uh, so you've got a, a mode button here that allows you to go through a series of four different options. You know? uh, the first one is lift. The second one is bump mode. And the next one is big bump. And the final one is setting. You, you press it again, it'll go back to lift mode. So when you turn the unit on, it defaults to the lift mode. And the lift mode is pretty much what you would expect from a regular uh, a lift for your sawmill. Um, if you press the up button, it goes up. And if you press the down button, everything goes down you know um and uh you've got a zero here so uh you know you'd use your scale in this mode and um typically what i think what i think i'm going to do and i'll i'll know better once i get a couple um dozen hours into the machine and uh get to using it but i'm expecting that i'll use the lift mode to cut the four sides off to create my cant and from there i'll, I'll change to a different mode you know so um, yeah, so basically I'd put a log up there and then I would put it in the lift mode. I'd bring it up to the, to where I wanted to make my first cut. I would make that cut and then I would, uh, bring the saw, saw head back and rotate the, the log over, um, square it up and then cut the next one, next uh, side off and then cut the next side and cut the last side. And then I'd be ready. And then I'd probably lower the saw head down to the top of the cant and then zero it out from that point and then I'd switch over to what would be the next mode and the next mode is the bump mode and in the bump mode every time you press up or, up or down it goes up a selected amount or it goes down a selected amount so you can go into the settings and you can set this to be whatever your size boards you want to cut so say I want to cut one inch boards then I would set that to one inch so by using the lift mode to cut my cant then I can lower the blade down to the top of the can, zero it out, and then by pressing down once, the blade will drop one inch. So some, some unique things that it does on this too is there's a, in the settings, there's a kerf setting so that you can set the, uh, the kerf of your, your blade, how much it takes, and so its calculations will take that into effect. And then also, um, a lot of people, um, because of slack in the cable, a lot of people like to lower the sawmill down just below what they want to do and then raise it up a little bit so it takes out any slack in the cable. And this thing can do that or it can not do it, your choice, you know. But same with the kerf. You can put a kerf in or you can not put a kerf in. That's, that's up to you how you want to use your, your lift. But um, if you have this, um, the uh, slack option set, then what it'll do is it'll drop down and you can set how much, whether it drops an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch or whatever and then rises back up. To meet that uh, that uh, uh, that setting of one inch, so so that, that's kind of nice because then you would uh, say I want to cut one inch boards, and I would just push the after zeroing it at the top of the cant, I just push down once, it lower down an inch, um, take into account the curve, raise back up a little bit, and then be right at the one inch. And when I cut that board, I should have a one inch board, and then. Um, when I go, when I bring the sawmill back, I can just push down again, and it'll come down and do it again. Now, a lot of people, when they bring the sawmill head back, they lift it up a little bit to get back um, past the um, the, uh, the the board, so it's not scraping along the, the log you just cut. So in that case, you know, you go through, you do your first board one inch, and then press it up again. It'll go up an inch. You can bring it back, press it down twice and it'll drop down to where it start, did the first cut and then drop down one more inch, taking into account your curve, and then the next board you cut will be exactly one inch, and you can continue to do that through your board. So, and that's, I would see myself, once I've created the cant, I would see myself using that mode. Um, 
The next mode is called Big Bump. And right now it's set for six inches, but um, that's also something in the settings that you can go and change and make that uh, whatever number you want. But uh, the, the point of this is, Say I, I finish cutting my log, right, and I'm, I put up a second log and I'm ready to cut it, but say it's a 14 inch log, right? Well, I mean, that's a long ways to have to hold the button in the lift mode to go up, or if you're in the bump mode doing one inch, you're having to hit this 14 times. So they give you the big bump mode, and you can set, like I said, you can go in the settings and set that to what you want. Uh, right now it's default to six inches, but um, you push the button up once, and it'll go up six inches. Push it again, it'll go up another six inches. Uh, push the button down it'll go down six inches so uh, so that, that that would be a handy feature for when you're starting out your next log and then once you've done that you can go back to your lift mode create your cant on all four sides and then uh, put the blade down to the top of your cant zero it out go to the bump mode and set your size board that you want three quarter inch uh, four quarter um, uh, two inch boards whatever whatever you're looking for one and three quarter inch and then you can start using your up and down to cut those boards um, at the exact precise dimension that you're looking for. Um, and if we push the button again to go to the final mode, uh, it's not really a mode, this one's the settings. So this allows you to change those settings like the curve setting and um, the big bump setting and so forth. So we'll go through that, there's a few of those in there. So um, if you're in there, you select zero, which is also the select exit and then you're in the uh, so the first thing is the bump set okay so the, which is the one you would typically set first the size um, um, board that you want you know so say I was going to cut one inch boards I would raise this up And then, um, so this, 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 this power lift head comes uh, preset to sixteenths of an inch. Um, you can, I understand from uh, reaching out to Epic Saws, they can give you a software upgrade that would allow you to do one thirty second of an inch. Um, but I, for what I'm doing, for sure, one sixteenth of an inch is fine. Um, and um, let's see, after making your selection, um, if you um, you push select exit, it will exit this and it, it'll it'll reboot and save that setting and so then, then you're permanently set to one inch. So next time you turn the power lift on, it'll be set to one inch. Um, if you press node, you go to mode, you go to the next section, um, the next setting, which is set the big bump. And like I said before, it's set at six inches. Same thing, you go up and down, you can change that. Um, you push mode again. That's your curve setting. Right now it's turned off. So if I turn that on, I'd be able to set this, uh, the size of the curve of my blade. And I haven't measured that yet, you know, but I uh, will be doing that because I do want to take that into account. And then the slack, right now the slack, slack is set for 0 0.0625. Um, same thing, you can increase that. But I'll put it back where it was for now, um, which is uh, after testing it, I'll see if that works fine for me. I'm pretty sure it will. But, and then if I go press the mode again. Okay, it's fractions or decimal. Right now, I have it set for decimals, but you can change it to do fractions instead of decimals. Um, so whatever is easier for you to work with, you know, I, uh, I don't mind decimals. I don't mind fractions either, really. But uh, decimals work fine for me. And if I press mode again, I get to the lift rate, okay? So the lift rate um, affects how fast your saw head goes up and down, but if it's set too high, um, the uh, uh, stepper motor will have a hard time trying to, to lift the head, right? So um, this is kind of a compromise, and this is, this is one of the things I had kind of my a problem with my saw head is that it, was, it wasn't quite squared up, and so it was making a grind, grinding noise because the head was trying to lift, but it couldn't because it wasn't squared right up. I did get that all squared up and everything, um, so it's, it is working better now for me. Um, but yeah, th this is 
typically you don't change this without talking to Tony, but uh, if you know what it is and what it's doing, then um, that, that's what you do. You, if you can get a higher setting than the 200, you can get a little more speed out of, out of the lift. Um, and if we go to the next setting, we've got uh, lift steps. So this is something that uh, you're really not supposed to change without um, um, talking to uh, to Tony at uh, Epic Saws. It's a calibration that they set, um, and I forget exactly what that does. So if I I'll look that up and I'll I'll, I'll make a little comment there uh, in the video saying what that does. And if we go to the next one, lift acceleration. This is how fast the lift starts to lift and um, when you like first push the up button or the down button um, and yeah and uh, also I think it, it affects how fast it decelerates at the end of your your lift um, and then the units you can set it for inches or you can set it for metric and if you notice in the display when I first turned it on and in the normal modes it shows the uh, how much power is in the battery so like 11.9 volts or 12.7 or however, however strong your battery is you know because this this unit and the lift is using power from the battery and that's one of the reasons that they um, they sell it for the HM130 max is because the uh, the motor has a uh, chart an alternator to charge the battery so um, and but he does sell other units that have on the side here attached a um, a mount for a DeWalt uh, 20 volt battery or a Milwaukee I think 18 volt battery so you have your choice so which one you so so th these units can be used on the HM126 um, so I think that's a good, that's a good thing of course you'd have to take that off and charge it each night but that's still that's workable yeah um, and. Voltage calibration. This is just uh, so that if uh, you can uh, you can make an adjustment to get the proper reading for your voltage. If, if if it turns out that the voltage that it's displaying is not accurate to what your battery is actually at, you know, you can test that with the volt ohm meter and adjust this to uh, to correct that setting. And then exit. So if I push select and exit, I think it's going to go back to the lift mode. So. Um, that's pretty much all the settings with the buttons that you can do. Um, so, like, like I said, the most important I think are the lift and the uh, bump mode. There, um, there is a calibration you can do to change some of these settings to make sure that your um, the um, size of wood you're cutting is. Uh, say you've got it set for one inch, that it's actually coming out to one inch. And there's a formula for that and a way to calibrate and test that. And I will do that in a future video and show you how that happens. But Tony, what Tony does is he calibrates it based upon his sawmill, which is an HM130 Max. And um, it should be accurate for most, most mills, you know. But, um, you know, your mill might be slightly different. So he does give instructions on how to calibrate it and how to uh, use the formula to calculate and to go into the settings and, and um, change that on the uh, lift steps, I believe. So I will, um, in a future video, I will uh, do that calibration and I'll show you guys how that works. So anyway, um, that's all for now. I appreciate you guys uh, watching the video and uh, taking the time. I hope you guys are finding the uh, Epic Saws Power Lift interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to using it and uh, saving <laughs> the old shoulder, you know, from that crank handle. But um, yeah, it uh, should be a lot of fun. And then, uh, like I said, I've got uh, his power feed coming too. So uh, stick with me and join me for my journey to automate the uh, my sawmill using power lifts accessories. So uh, talk to you later. Thanks uh, for watching and like and subscribe.